Hello everyone and welcome back to Disc Golf Examiner. Today we're bringing you coverage from the 2021 Shamrock Showdown Back 9. I'm your host Brian Keegan, joined today by Adam Woodward. Adam, how's it going? What's up everybody? I'm so excited to see how this Back 9 plays out. Thank you so much Disc Golf Examiner for being out here and capture the coverage. It's such a privilege for all of us to have this and thank you so much for that. <laughs> Man, I am such a huge fan of Moraine. I love everything about this place. Every time I'm here, I know people that come from out of town that drive long, long distances to come play Moraine. So it's it's truly a pleasure to be out here covering disc golf, especially on such a, a beautiful day as it was today. So let's go ahead and start things off on hole 10. It's a par four, 528 feet, and it's in a new position. It's over here to the left on top of the hill here. And definitely never seen it here before. They must have just put this in. <laughs> and Vinny off the tee. A little yeah. slip there. He's just looking at his hand, and he just didn't know what happened. And we, unfortunately, there's no mulligans in a tournament, or that's when we would definitely give him back to him. <laughs> yeah, Vinny doing a fantastic job. He was uh, nine under on the first round, bogey-free. And here we have the, uh, the bag nine, He's still got a four-stroke lead on the card and uh, on you, Adam, specifically. And, you know, we'll go ahead and see how Mitch throws off the tee here. Oh, this is a beautiful shot. It is. That's going to be textbook. And he's going to have a great angle to this, let's call it a D position. That's about pin high from the C position off to the left. And so it really stretches out the hole. Um, you really want to push your drive a little bit longer so that you're giving yourself the right angle and into the green. So Vinny here is scrambling. And this back nine, in my opinion, is, is definitely a lot harder than the front nine. You really want to score on the front nine and kind of maintain on the back. As you can see, you get a first glimpse of this new position and why you want to be at the right angle a little bit deeper so you don't have to contend with that tree where Ben is here, um, an opportunity to go around it or cut it in front, but both give you inside the circle putt. And we have Vinny still at minus 12. So he's playing well. He's had a couple, a couple bogeys, but still a, a four stroke lead. And we have a couple very good players in the hunt on the oh, chase yeah. card. And yeah, we, have, um, we, we have Brad Chick and Tyler Horn here uh, during this tournament. And I know Tyler's on the chase card. And we expect those guys to come up here and take our money generally. So <laughs> we, we, we have not super high expectations that they're going to come in with 10, 50 rounds and, and take this down. So, but what's important is that we're not going to let that change our game. We're going to play as best as we can. Um, st stick with the game plan, and um, and then if we execute our game plan, we can definitely play at their up at their level. And so we're going to you're going to see all the players really try to grind through this back nine with that in mind, and just try to go for the best possible finish. And if there's a win, it's an icing on the cake for sure. And Ben is a great player from the Columbus area himself. He is a uh, really uh, tight technical player. Uh, plays those placement shots, is a great putter. Um, we've seen him. <laughs> we went to an overtime at the Steel City, uh, sorry, actually the Buckeye Classic uh, a couple years ago, and it was came down to him and uh, another guy who, it was a putting duel. It was amazing. Uh, but hole 11 is a par 3. It's 312 feet. Kind of plays low. Uh, underneath, uh, it has a, is a very low ceiling, I should say. And the backhand play here is a, a neutral disc on a slight hyzer, low. You're trying to get that ground play. Again, Mitch just showing us how it's wow. done. That was beautiful. And it's that, that is literally the narrated line. And this is not where you just <laughs> barely miss the, <laughs> the first available tree and put yourself back behind the bush. You know, Adam, I got to say uh, consistency, though. That was almost exactly where you landed the first round, too. 
Yeah, and, and we keep joking. Wherever you're on the on the the camera, I always end up hitting you or getting really close to hitting <laughs> you. So I really need you. I'll tell you again. Please stand directly behind the basket from now on. Right. When I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> and Vinny playing a great flex shot. Oh, oh! front rim. hitting the pin. So close. That would have been epic. Wow. I don't know. I mean, my my placement seemed to work for Vinny there, Adam. <laughs> it just it's just me. It's like a magnet. <laughs> oh, it's a, a little shorter effort. than that one. Yeah. What's a shame is I made that exact cut the previous round, so I was really hoping to put that in. Here we go, Mitch. Yeah. Great birdie. Definitely one of the more birdieable holes on this back nine. So definitely one you want to get. Ben, too. For sure. And with Vinny still with a, a three-stroke lead over us, you know, again, the, the we're, we're thinking Mitch, myself, and Ben, we're, we're battling, and Vinny's off to the races. And um, But goal on the card was to have fun. All four of us, that was the primary goal for the day. Um, however we played, we played, and that just made it for a spectacular day with a mid fifties temperature and just, you know, epic fun. So Ben's going to reach eight under as well. So that's going to bring you to then four strokes of the lead here on hole 12 par four, 615 feet. Honestly, I find this to be one of the more challenging holes on the course. For sure. The second shot, there's not really a fairway. So all you're trying to do is get this to skip as far left as possible um, to give yourself an option to go down one of the two gaps that kind of sneak around a, a center bunker area with dense trees. Um, this is definitely a bonus birdie for most players. And um, we're seeing some good tee shots, given some options to get to, to access the pin. Oh no, Vinny's going to clip a tree there. That was looking like it was going to be pretty good out of the hand. Adam. And this is a Nuke OS, and this disc has just been putting me in the money spot. This is actually into the gap, um, and that's the best you can ask for. And so Vinny just pitching this out, forehand roller, <laughs> it's still I cutting. It's I still know. cutting. <laughs> this is his harp. <laughs> it's yeah. still rolling. And so he got an extra, I would say, at least 80, 90 feet of distance that he was just trying to pitch out. And he got an amazing roll. That was like watching a wheel just roll down the hill. Yeah, sometimes and, those harps, you get them on the, their side and they just keep rolling. <laughs> and so you can see kind of these small gaps that you have. Um, it's difficult to access the pin from this left gap. Um, it's a really tight kink. Um, and so no surprise that there's some tree hitting. It's really just don't want to kick way right. That's the goal. And Mitch showing us the right gap, which is probably the main opportunity to, to get all the way up there. He's a little bit long. He's going to have a nice putt back. So even with a perfect drive here, I still really don't have a shot. So I, I did call this, by the way. I said it out loud, but I'm going to take the backdoor route. Wow. Um, because that could definitely have looked like it was an accident. So, <laughs> and we all had a good laugh about that afterwards. And you're set up perfectly for your birdie. <laughs> and Vinny here. Oh. That good up shot. Had a chance. Yeah, he was, he said, I was trying to run that when he released that. And Ben on top of a bunch of sticks. So this is a precarious stance. But he's got to look at it. Shows you Ben's agility. The great, great up. Hard to get that power underneath it, the legs into it when you're standing on something yeah. so compliant. Mitch looking to can this. This will be for birdie. Oh. Which is, oh, just a little high. And this is about our comfort range. <laughs> 10 <laughs> feet. This is where you step up to it. It's like, okay, I don't have to worry about this one.
<laughs> so as I say that, still taking my time, going yeah. through the routine, making sure there's no spit outs, no dumb dumb putts, um, even from 10 feet. <laughs> that was a great birdie for you. For Ben, it'll be a par. And Vinny, unfortunately, is going to have a bogey. Yeah, so Vinny, his like his game has been laser focused the whole round, but his forehand has started to let him down a little bit. So let's see what he chooses to for shot selection as we move through the rest of the back nine. Hole thirteen is a par three. It's two hundred and eighty-two feet and very tightly wooded. Uh, it is. There's definitely no way to. I mean, you can sometimes sneak it out, but you have to hit this dead straight like you're doing, Adam. And you're right up there next to the basket. Yeah, that's the. This is a, such an interesting line. If you want to throw the turnover, like Mitch and I are doing here, if you, there's always a slight headwind and just wants to turn a little bit more than you expect. So, an alternative play is the forehand flex, which I really like, and been showing you how to execute that wow. perfectly. The forehand's nice if you can do it here because you don't have to turn your back to the gap. Um, it's only about a ten foot gap. And like we should, Vinny's showing there, that kickoff to the right is just the worst because you have this. This is your options. And oh no, I call this uh, to reference the Masters. I call this the Amen Corner of Marine, um, 12, 13, and fourteen because there's just so many trees in the fairway yeah. that you can really put you in a tough situation quickly. Yeah, if you're not exactly on your your game for that particular shot, it can definitely cost you several strokes. Mitch with good extension. Ooh, almost the bank shot. <laughs> and Vinny really just wants to concentrate, put this in and move on to the next hole. Oh no. Just a little bit high right. So it was just, it was interesting because on the, um, the national tour event that's going on in Texas right now, the Texas States, Kevin Jones was talking about the sweet spot of the basket and how it extends for a right-hand player from the bottom left on the diagonal to the top right. Um, so that he actually puts on Heiser to open that sweet spot up as much as he can. And I think mm -hmm. it's very characteristic. You can see in some of the putts were missing when we hit the chains. If you're hitting on the opposite diagonal, um, you can definitely get some spit outs. So bottom left is good. High right is good and anything in between on that. So consider that if you're debating on what type of putt, um, you know, switching back and forth, not quite sure what your best option is, just know the highest odds are going to give you putting something on hyzer with that diagonal sweet spot. That's some great knowledge. Hole 14 is par 4, 5, 16, and it is played to this raised basket here on the right side. So split fairway, you have two options. I'm choosing to go with the understable T-bird on a Heiser flip line, a little fade at the end. Um, that's my game is built around that <laughs> exact shot. So it's awesome, um, but not surprised I hit it. Um, Ben's going to show us the same route with the heat, just similar disc. Um, and that's okay from over there. Mitch just didn't like it. He was actually telling me, like, I just don't, it doesn't feel comfortable. He's more of a flat player, slight hyzer player. And so he's showing us the fairway driver on a flat line, getting to basically the same spot, just another way to skin the cat. And they both work perfectly. And Vinny giving that a crush. And showing again why Marine plays very well for lefties. Like that's just being able to play. No turn at all, just the highs are line the whole time. Put yourself in a good position. Ben, and then the strategy here from Ben's spot is just advance. It's par, it's par at that point. Just give yourself three strokes from there and, and make the putt and get off the hole. If you're up here, um, you have kind of a flex approach shot that you just want to sneak around those trees. Um, and with an elevated basket, anything inside 20 feet is really what you're looking for. Uh, hmm. Vinny's going to clip a tree there. He does, There's a gap back there along those those trees. And Ben, I think he was he was giving that a good run. <laughs> yep, and he put himself exactly where he wants. And Mitch with a 
Huge drive. Just hitting the trees at the edge of the circle, but he's going to give himself a birdie putt as well. So then he's trying to can it. Ooh, just a little bit long. That was a great run. Let's see if Mitch can sink this for his birdie. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, great, great shot. Yeah, we'll have to watch that again in slow motion. Let's examine it. Nose up. Yes. Got it right over the rim. Canned it. Just a beautiful putt. Let's see if Vinny can uh, duplicate. That nice disc golf examiner hat. <laughs> oh, no, just a little bit high. Yeah, we got brand new Disc Golf Examiner hats. Camber Disc Golf Company actually partnered with us. We were able to to, to get some made, and they're I'm, I'm loving them. They look great. Definitely going to have to snag one from you next time we're together. <laughs> um, Ben's going to get a fortunate little roll away there. He should be able to make that putt. So this basket, I've seen four putts, five putts, six putts. No joke mm -hmm. on this hole. It just, they, they love to hit. If you hit metal and it doesn't go in it likes to bounce down and hit the rock pile and kind of slow roll down the hill to the mm -hmm. circle's edge and this is definitely one where you don't want to mess around all right grabbing that birdie go. as we move on to hole 15 it's a par four it's 843 feet this is the signature hole in Moraine. Everybody knows about hole 15 in Moraine. And we'll have OB on the left. And so there's a headwind. First round, I flipped the same disc, a very overstable destroyer, and just an overcorrection there, which was surprising, but that's how it goes sometimes. Mitch trying to make the correction. This is exactly what I did the first round in that <laughs> they adjusted... So I told him, like, hey, that was a really overstable disc, and it didn't flip. And um, it's just very nose sensitive on this about 5 to 10 mile an hour light wind, not gusting. You just really don't want to give it the, the top plate to the wind at all. And we're seeing exactly what happens when you do that. And, and one thing we didn't mention here yet, Adam, you've taken the lead uh, at 11 under by, you know, three strokes here. Uh, what are you thinking going into this hole? Oh, as Vinny tries to take off my head here. <laughs> <laughs> Just smoked. Jeez. Wow. It's so impressive. It's so fun to watch Vinny throw. Um, I actually have, well, I, as, as I throw my third shot from OB, I was, that wind is still wreaking havoc on, on my dish choice there. Um, I'm just playing the game plan. I didn't, I wasn't looking at scores. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know I was in the lead um, and didn't even want to know. Again, I'm just, you know, baseline assumption is I'm assuming somebody's going to catch us from the lead car because none of us are playing 9, 10 under golf. Um, so sticking with the game plan, we're all trying to do that, just battling with these guys and just jockeying for position while we're having fun. And it's important, you know, I'll say to, you know, when, you, when you're in these type of positions, if you're able to keep the mental game and the focus on having fun and sticking to the game plan and not allowing yourself to get too worked up over place and, um, you know, how well you're playing versus other players, you're just staying within your own game. Um, it really helps calm the nerves and the pressure situations because you're basically removing the pressure by not paying attention to it. Vinny's going to have a very long look for his par putt. Nice, nice upshot there, Ben. <laughs> Not a lot of wind on this hole today. It was just enough that on 15 and Moraine, you're always thinking wind. Um, but these upshots are just trying to, again, stick them in close and also trying, if possible, to give yourself a tailwind putt, which is going to push you on this side of the basket where I'm throwing from. So I want to make sure that as I throw this Rattler upshot, that I'm not going long and giving myself any sort of headwind putt, no matter how long the distance is. And so just being able to tap in with a tailwind, even from this distance, 
just makes takes it from a any sort of a challenge to a no brainer. As I run up to go get my mini, I left all the way on top of the hill. Vinny, fun, Vinny, Vinny, grabbing. He should have a par there, right? Yeah, yeah. Much needed par to stop the bleeding. Um, we still got three more holes, and you know, did, again, I didn't know what the scores were now, so I'm just kind of putting myself in the mental frame of the other competitors here and. You know, there's there's definitely some blood in the water and an opportunity to take this down. Um, I don't think anybody was looking at scorecards, but certainly an opportunity to to take this down to 18 and even force a playoff. And hole 16 is a par five. It is 663 feet. And unfortunately, as we saw on social media this past week, a giant tree fell in front of this uh, tee shot. Yeah, this huge apple tree off to the left just fell in front of a blue tee. The hole slowly opening up over time. Um, but again, the strategy here is to put yourself, and we were all talking about this. We're not actually interested on in landing on the, Vinny's trying to go up top, but the other three of us are just trying to land at the bottom. Because if you get on the side of the hill and not as far up as Vinny got, you just only forehand roller or something weird is your option. You prefer to actually be further back. And even though this is a miss, I am, I've practiced that shot intentionally. Um, and it being that far back really gives you a good angle because it's not a long par five. Adam, looks like you're going to have a great shot. Just there. straight. A lot of confidence in that shot there. Um, knew exactly what the line was, knew the disc was. And again, the importance of preparing for Moraine by knowing where your misses is going to be and making sure that you, you know, you're taking time, not just to throw the perfect shot, but also to throw where you could miss from your kind of top three spots on, on each hole. And this is a good example why you don't want to be on the left side or on the side hill, because the, the nose angle to throw it is so steep. It just puts you into the canopy very quickly. And it enforces these type of shots we're seeing here. Looks like so ben, Ben's going to go for a roller. He's got right underneath this box here. Where the green tree is. He's going to curl off to the left. But again, that's still okay. And up and down there, you should par and move on to the next hole. Oh, and Vinny with a beautiful sidearm. Good skip and roll. He should be within putting range there. But it is in a very scary position there because you do have a hill behind the basket. And this is just a little forehand firebird. Flex it around, throw it high, let it hit the trees and, and bonk down so you don't go long. And Mitch is going to do the same thing. Just didn't oh. quite get it forced over, but that was going to be money, which is a little bit more Anheuser. Ben with it. A little long with his upshot, but should be within putting range for him. Mitch jumping it up. Oof, hits an early tree. It's going to be tough. This is for... There it is. So that's <laughs> huge. That's huge. Yeah. Grabbing his birdie here. Got to check out a second angle. And Vinny showing you um, the Kevin Jones tip there, throwing it on a hyzer along that diagonal and opening up as much of that basket as possible for it to just drop right in. And well, some gonna, of the, this will be for your three, right? No. Uh, this four. is for four. Yeah. This is for four. Making sure it goes in good extension. And we got two holes left at this point in time. You know, everybody kind of knows it's close. I'm not sure exactly who was looking at the scores or who wasn't. Um, but the idea here now in the last two holes is birdie, birdie, and, and see if you can put yourself in contention. Yeah, and we're going to go ahead and move on to hole 17 here. Uh, hole 17 is a par three. It's 336 feet. Very low ceiling. Honestly, the whole gap is very narrow. Um, I, I, I say that the, the gap is pretty narrow. Um, 
more, probably more narrow than any other hole on the course. Uh, it's just such a tight window for you to throw through. Yeah, to drive it all the way back to an elevated basket, this tree right off the tee box is certainly in your head and making you uncomfortable. And what you're trying to do is very similar to here is to just throw a mid range or something that's going to turn over and drift and just give yourself an opportunity to float it back through the initial bogey trees. Ben, um, Ben doing it almost perfectly, just a little hyzer at the end. Um, but that's okay. It's, it's the misses. You don't want a, sh a short, right and kicking early. Um, and Mitch going to throw the same thing, a mid range, getting it to turn, and this looks money. Oh. Uh -huh. As soon as I say that. <laughs> and nice people on and off the course, I guess. And Mitch was definitely thinking half run there. Um, I'm sure he knows the situation. And Vinny is over here with just a, in a fallen tree of, you can see how frustrated he is. Like he really just doesn't have any options and he doesn't have a swing. So this is a do the best we can here. Forehand roller and it looked good. Just hit some roots and ended up getting stuck up on that tree. Ben thinking in here. He's trying to manufacture this into the chains. Is it a he good gave, bid? And, yeah. ah, and he was kicking himself. He just needed a little bit more on that one. So this is an interesting putt. There's the hyper aggressive line through the limbs of the trees or try to step around and kind of throw a hyzer putt. Um, not wanting to hit the tree and having a 30 footer per par. Low probability to make this, but just trying to give it the height and, and trying to get it in from an awkward stance. Let's see if any can can this for par. Oof, just a little high. And you can see Mitch, he uh, takes his time on every putt, the same routine on any every putt. Um, when you're practicing at home, practice your routine. Um, drill it into your head and don't ever go away from it. And it just really helps you in, in all the pressure situations and kind of keep a clean head when you're stepping up to a putt. It's almost like pulling a trigger um, and just tapping into that muscle memory. So you'll see a lot of a lot of the guys on this card throughout the round today go back and check out what their routines are and see if you can implement them into your game. And so we move on to the final hole, hole 18, par 4, 552 feet. You have double OB, you have a drop zone, um, and it's actually the basket's on the other side of the final OB there. Uh, and Adam, you're going to give this a great crush. You're going to get across the first OB, and you'll be looking over the OB to make your upshot. Which I don't know that I'm winning yet. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. I think you had a two-stroke lead going into this hole, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yeah, we have some some movement on the chase card. So um, definitely time to start thinking about position here. Um, this hole can be easily double bogey um, you know, with the two sets of OBs. And we're seeing Mitch crush it all the way up there and really making it a lot easier. And Vinny is ready to crush this hole. And Vinny is doing what he does best, giving that an amazing drive a crush, uh, got a great skip all the way down wow. the fairway. And so this is the chance. So you can lay up this hole, which I've been a play in the past, but you can easily leak over here where Ben is. Um, and he made it certainly look easy, but that bend around those trees with two OBs to negotiate is just really hard. So it's, it's one of those holes where I'm not sure the layup, you know, if you look at all the odds and the statistics, the layup actually gives you a better chance than going for it if you can clear the ditch off the drive. Mitch will have a long look at that basket uh, with some OB behind it. And it looks like, oh, Vinny's going to follow him back there as well. So as I was lining up this putt, I was actually going to throw a zone and try to do some 
something probably not very smart. And Vinny actually stopped me, you know, as a great friend and competitor, actually stopped me and said, hey, lay up. And I said, what do you mean lay up? He's like, you're winning by two. I was like, really? So, <laughs> and so I just, so this is, uh, you know, I really wanted to putt this too. And right before I stepped up to it, Vinny was like, no, don't, don't go for it. Why would you go for this? I was like, I want to make it. Um, so as much as I wanted to go for it right at the last minute, it was just kind of like, okay, just, just bail. Kind of your body doesn't want you to put it in. Yeah. Especially putting over that OB. We've seen so many, uh, last, oh no, just like, just like that, just like that. It's that easy on, on this hole to, to go OB and just to ruin your day. Yeah. We've seen, uh, you know, cards just completely get destroyed at the end here on 18 because of that OB. Um, and uh, Vinny, actually very fortunately was not OB. So he'll, he'll be able to putt from down there. Um, and Mitch not playing with that OB. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely scary. So Vinny going to tap this in. Definitely going to hit the field and work on that forehand because the rest of his game is so on. I expect a, a lot from him this year, you know, on his journey to, to be a thousand rated, which I definitely think he can do this year. And, and we're all rooting for him to do that. And Adam putting out now the 2021 Shamrock Showdown champion. So stoked. <laughs> and that's. Our coverage, uh, we had actually some very great competition on the chase card as we were talking about. Uh, you'll see come up here on the screen in a moment. Uh, it was great getting to cover all these guys. We've covered them all in some capacity before. But as you can see there, Tyler Horn uh, coming up from the chase card, as we've seen him do so uh, a few times before, and, and nearly taking the lead. So it was a great round, great uh, coverage, uh, great time being with you guys out there. Um, anything you'd like to add, Adam? Thank you so much, Disc Golfer Examiner, for being there and capturing the action. It's su such a privilege to have you guys out there. Um, thank you, uh, PFD, for another spectacular tournament. And I'm um, certainly looking forward to coming back and defending my, uh, my title here next year. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll look forward to it, Adam. And we'll be there, of course. Uh, if there's been a Shamrock Showdown, we've covered it. So... Uh, we're, we're always excited to be out there at that tournament. So, all right, guys, well, that's going to do it for us. Remember to like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube and share the video. It's what helps grow the sport. So if you'd like to uh, leave a comment, we'll always try to get back to you as well. So that's going to do it for us. So until next week, keep banging those, keep banging chains. those chains. <laughs>